Well, hello there. I'm the Confused Canuck, and I'd like to thank Beware of Darkness for a guest spot on his channel. Now, because Mr. Darkness is such a huge fan of Hitchens, and Hitchens has a long legacy of tackling really controversial arguments, I'm going to do the same in this video, so enjoy. complete story of the beaver, why not contact the Canadian Wildlife Service in Ottawa? So there are a few arguments as polarizing as gun control in the United States of America today. And with good reason, when we look at events like Sandy Hook or the Pulse shooting in Orlando, people are going to take notice and they're going to want something to be done. Unfortunately, because a good number of people are largely ignorant on firearms, they will take positions that on the surface seems to be reasonable but doesn't really work out. For example, this is what people typically think of when assault rifles are mentioned. But in reality, how dangerous are the assault rifles, like the AR-15? How many bullets can sure. the AR-15 that was used in this latest attack and was used at Sandy Hook and Aurora and most of the mass shootings in recent history, mm -hmm. How many bullets can it fire in one minute? Aimed fire, roughly 45 to 60 rounds per minute. Coincidentally, just like a normal hunting shotgun can. Well, how about how many people are killed by these assault rifles? I mean, if they're used predominantly in these mass shootings, it must be a significant figure, right? So, that's not true either. If we look at the FBI data on homicide, we can see that for the years 2010 through 2014, there were approximately 300 people killed per year by rifles. And yes, this includes assault rifles. Compare that to handguns, which killed on average 6,000 people per year. That means for every one person killed by a rifle of any type, 20 people were killed by handgun. I mean, hell, there are approximately five times more people killed by knives. Well, why not just get rid of all firearms, like Australia or the UK? Well, that's because, generally speaking, it doesn't work. It doesn't reduce the overall level of societal violence. So when the UK banned handguns in 1997, which we've seen is responsible for close to 75% of the murders in the US, why do we see firearm homicide rates increasing from mid-1999 to 2002? Also, why do we see firearm homicide rates for years between pre- and post-handgun ban about equal? But what about this section here? It's dropping way off. Isn't that proof that the ban worked? Well, in my opinion, no, because that's a time when the UK increased its police force by about 16%, which is a massive increase. Well, what about Australia? That's another country that had a massive firearm recall. Well, that happened in 1996, and the graph shows literally no change between the rate of decreasing homicides before and after that program. So, what can we do about gun violence? Well, I don't think that should be our focus at all. I think we should be concerned with all violence, and it's been shown time and time again that the way you combat societal violence is to increase the standard of living for the population. That means a more robust welfare system. It means putting less people in jail for minor infractions. It means things like health care and affordable housing. This is why countries like Canada have one-third the murder rate of the United States, despite having essentially the same access to firearms. But what do you think? Hit me up in the comments below and I'll be happy to respond to them. Thanks again to Beware of Darkness for the guest spot and thank you for watching. If you enjoy my content, please go over to my channel and subscribe. It helps me continue making videos. Thank you very much.